most of the best farms, they don't ever hit the market. A lot of our farms sell prior to ever being on the market. We have a pre-market buyer list and that gives you the ability to put your email in there and follow along as we get projects underway. Um, we'll blast out there, you know, the first email you might see is, we got this 80 coming available in Southeast Iowa and uh, a lot of people already are looking in an area and it gives you that ability to get in on something before it actually hits the market and gets gone. All right, we're here in Jersey County. Toby has yet to see this farm. I've been telling him about it. Like Green Day said, welcome to paradise, Toby. <laughs> this place, I've, I've been telling a bunch of my friends, I mean, it is one of the top three, could be number one, two, three, wreck pieces that I've ever owned in Illinois, um, just because it's so diverse. First of all, and most importantly, it has big deer history. It's got big deer from last year. We've already got big deer and our plots aren't even really coming yet. Um, we already have upper end deer this year. Um, so you got big deer, that's the most important. Number two, you're like half hour from St. Louis airport and 10 minutes from the town of Grafton, which is an awesome like tourist river town with wineries and everything. So location's awesome. It has extremely high income for a farm that's got this much cover and doesn't feel like it should have a lot of income. It's almost 17,000 a year. It's priced in the 5,000s, which most of Illinois, that ship has sailed. So there's a lot of upside potential on this piece. CRP not only is high dollar, but it's it's warm season grass and it's already established. Everybody wants that and it takes forever to get going. This place is loaded with big blue and Indian and switch already over your head. It's got a sheep pond that holds teal and ducks. It's got abundance of quail. It's got crazy good turkey hunting. I've seen and heard pheasants while we've been working on this farm. It's surrounded by this area of Illinois is a lot less ag and it's a lot more like rolling wooded and 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 pasture-y you know kind of reminds me of some parts of ohio so your food plots are so much more powerful because you're not competing with food everywhere there's a lot less serious hunters down here so you're not competing with killers in every wood lot there's big landowners all around it it's it's secluded because it's off the beaten path and there's a, a, an easement road which doesn't even really feel like an easement but there's an easement road so your farm starts already tucked back in it's got a cabin that's functional it's spray foam it's got a solar system in it and stuff um, for lights and everything it's totally functional you know bathroom and everything that you can stay in i'm probably leaving some things out but it is a upper end unbelievable farm that offers everything you could want on a rec piece. Like you said, I hadn't been here before, only ever looked at it on aerial, and of course I get shared with the trail cameras and stuff, which are super impressive already. But like I pulled in here, pulling in here like I was a buyer, I was just my first time looking at it, like all my first impressions, so I pay attention to that, and it super secluded. The easement road doesn't look like an easement road, it's gravel, it's got two different gates, and you go up out of the bottoms on this beautiful scenic top, the entrance is right there behind Chris, and this cabin is sits way up on the, the front side of the farm, so being up here and parking and having your stuff up here is, is not very intrusive to this area of the farm that you're hunting in the back. And just convenience-wise, I mean, so close to the cities. And, you know, I also noticed coming in here when I was driving through the neighborhood, like, no box blinds, no hunting pressure, no signs of outfitting, all that good stuff. So, I mean, definitely has all the right ingredients and, and definitely has a great first impression when you pull in here. So this can be a pretty exciting project. Other than Chris Walker, I heard he's been knocking on doors everywhere around here, asking permission. This Chris Walker guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little kill plot here on the south end. We've been kind of calling this the island. It's like a wishbone um, of woods. And we have a really big deer that's been on camera and he seems to be staying in here. Uh, there's a great big point in there and stuff. So that switch over there will allow you to get in and out of the back of that box. Um, plus it sits up a little bit higher. And we shaped it to where that box is out so you've got a bow range shot over to these uh, limbs that I figured they'd scrape on um, and kind of opened it back up. So, so we created a pinch and you can shoot this whole back cove where he's most likely going to come out. There's definitely going to be scrapes under those branches over there. That's part of the reason that blind was put where it is. And then we dug a water hole right there. Um, and it has plenty of downslope. And then I dug little tr wings, little trenches off the sides that'll catch that water and feed it green against water. 
fairly close to where you come in and out of the farm too. So as far as being able to slip in and out of here undetected, we're still kind of up here towards the cabin and the farm. So it's yeah. pretty low impact spot. Scent free box if the thermal start coming a little bit. But yeah, if one comes back here, arrows are probably flying. So this is like the most ridiculous spot of all time. This is that island you're talking about. It's in the center and the core of the farm, just a giant sanctuary. We've got this area sprayed. Um, there was some clover here, but we're going to plant, um, you know, like clover cereal grains in September here. Um, just did an acre and a half of, of radish and turnips, I think, over on this side. And as you can see, I mean, those branches were just scraped from years past just because it's a massive concentration of scent. And now it's just, it's going to be ridiculous. This island of trees right here has like a, some type of a viney uh, thing growing on it. it. looks like kutsu from back in the Carolinas. Anyway, there's that really tall sycamore there. And I went in with the skid steer and I literally made a trail in there and opened it up. It's like a bare dirt campsite back in there. But it's all hidden and encompassed by all that growth. So you can bring a box blind in there. But I think, I think anything west, from northwest around to even south, southwest, south, I think, especially in October, this is such a bottom and there's a big major creek behind it. All the air is going to be pooling to that creek. So I think it's a spot you could get away in October with, with, uh, without being um, in a box. And just what you're going to see out of that tree, I mean, you can see, what is that, 600 500 yards that way you can see you know 700 yards that way or something crazy i mean it, it's what you're going to see out of that tree stand all year i mean a rut or whatever but it just it's just one of those spots that you remember all the years we continue to do this yeah but again access wise when you look back up on that hill all that crp grass is chest high and you can barely see the mowed trail coming down there so you're only visible for just a little bit as you come over the rise and then the grass has got you covered the rest of the way so yeah access is is pretty bulletproof too and when i come back to mow the very last time i was going to try and mow a trail out and all the way against the wood line for egress so you'll come in you know come in on the one trail and leave on the other trail but it's just awesome we could finish right here transition between two food sources that yeah. a gap Yep, and in the future, you know, this is a big enough field. I'd probably do standing grain on that side. And we already got a camera that's been running. Pretty sure we got pretty good picks here already without there even being food here. So that should uh, yeah, this is an increase. This is another one of the plots that Big Deer has been on. I think he's obviously staying out there in that island center. The uh, God only knows what's going to show up here in the rut because we we're just talking. The closest crop fields is like. Yeah, if a mile that way or something, it's like there's nothing back here. When these deer, this is one of them farms where within a few years, when you become the only restaurant in town, these deer are going to start living here and staying here. And, you know, we just, there's no telling what, what could go on here if somebody treated her right. I've revised my statement from earlier. This is now the spot that I call dibs on. And it may change one more time, but as for right now, this is my spot. So <laughs> the cool thing about this spot is this, this sheep pond down here. It's got a really long dam and it just like collects all the water off these hillsides. There is so much there. I think there's some springs and stuff coming out of these hillsides, but there's so much like sub irrigated moisture down here because of this big water feature. You know, it was almost like we had to mow and spray and mow and spray and try and get it drying out. Um, but what's cool about it is, you know, like some of these brassicas and stuff like sugar beets and stuff that love that, that moisture, you know, you can get away with that down here. Dry years, you know, you're probably going to be ahead of the curve down here um, and always get something to grow. So basically what we have is we've got this big water feature that I mentioned earlier that holds, I don't know anything about duck, bird, hunting, whatever, but I know they said there's teal on there and stuff and you can shoot ducks off there and uh, so anyway that water comes all the way up to right here you know 20 yards in front of the box so we got a brassica field here and then we got a really nice clover field over here that's probably an acre or more and so next year if you had crop down there 
you'd literally have this string of food that goes clover, clover on both far ends, and then a big brassica plot that's you know, got plenty of moisture in this bottom, and then a big standing grain plot. And as long as it is, it's just so huntable because of these pinches on the end. It's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. You know, the water is big. That water feature right here is huge. It's like a kidney shape comes around and makes this shootable and makes that end shootable. I mean, it just creates both your primo spots by this water hole being here. We're gonna put a tree koi right here because of all the scent that'll pour through here. We'll be smashing it. And this morning I went in here in the skid steer, Sean mowed a, a back entrance trail to the back of this little thicket of you know, shrubs and stuff here. I came in with the bucket today and finished it off. So you are just down here in the thick of things and then out of here and nothing ever knows you're here. Pretty, pretty sweet. So we're up here in the center of the farm. And this is kind of like a destination field, food source, bigger. Um, if you look off to the north and the west, really everywhere, but there is so much cover on those farms to the north. They're big acreage. You don't see food plots on aerials. And these deer are gonna pound towards this thing. And like the north end of this field, we left at that pinch on purpose. And there's an awesome tree for a stand on the right in that point. And that point's got a really steep gut that'll suck your thermals down. So on a given year, you know, if you have a deer coming to this plot and the cameras are telling you he's pounding through that plot or that pinch, boom, you can hang a stand and kill him. So it's a really huntable field. We kind of created these pinches by, you know, kind of looking at everything and saying we want the blind there. And then we're bow range to that point and this point, you know, so all these deer pouring out of that wood lot are going to squeeze into this side. And then we've obviously got this is the main you know pinch in the future you got to get movement through here so i'm going to put a tree koi here but you got to get movement through here and you do that by putting two types of food even if you want to do all beans or all corn you know you need to you need to overseed one side in brassicas and the other side in cereal grain or just something so you have a difference uh in food sources on each side of this pinch and then it'll congregate those which will congregate scent which will make that tree koi just start spinning out of control. Um, so it's another game, game over spot, love it. All right, so this little uh, clover plot, it was already here. So we kind of like, we kind of like tied into it. And the idea here was we got this um, really tall, you know, CRP behind here. And this whole plot kind of tapers down to the south end of that big plot we were just at. So it creates another pinch up there, green to grain or clover to brassicas or whatever you do. And then that trail going up to the northwest ties in right at the same gap. Um, this is a perfect example of like why I love the jack stands and my box blinds. But even a blind like that, it's why we put them four foot so you can get out of them and not be skyline. Even without the jack stand, you could pick that blind up. Like if you had a, a deer that was pounding down here or pounding, you know, you needed to move. With this nice edge of CRP, you could scoop that box up and bring it anywhere you wanted and set it down in the grass. And, and you can literally hunt that entire edge with a westerly wind from any spot you want and be scent free and perfect ingress and egress. So once again, you know, frost seeding and spraying, get this thing souped back up. Another green, green to grain, green to green this year, whatever transition pinch point. This farm just like pinches everywhere unbelievable and, and people like they they try all their lives to try to establish a grass field that has that in it like people don't realize how unique and how valuable to have crp that is that tall with that diverse makeup of different kinds of grasses and i mean like i'm i'm super impressed with that i mean that if you go stand over there, that that grass is taller than you i mean that's over six feet tall yeah. And most of the farmers like that. I mean, it, it, what that does for you for access is like invaluable. Yeah, you just fly around on a bike so fast that, you know, your scent's not going all over the place and you can go buy them 20 feet and they won't even know. Um, and like I said, when we were just driving down here, I said to these guys, there was an area that I mowed because um, we were going to make that plot a little bigger and then it didn't get sprayed in any way. We just drove through it. It's the nicest big blue on the whole farm. So like, yeah. I don't think it's been burned or anything in a long time. It, there is no telling what this place would look like if you burn it to the ground. It looked I mean, like Kansas. Oh man, it would be, 
it would just be unbelievable. I remember back last winter when you stood up there looking down at the pond, it was just like it, the wind was blowing perfect and the, the, all the burn orange warm seasons. I was like, oh man. So that's it. It's one of my favorite farms we've ever owned. So Bobby just gave me the grand tour of the Jersey County 160. Thoroughly impressed with this place. Um, you know, it's available now. It's, it's ready for somebody to step in and hunt. The plots are planted, the boxes are in place, the access is cut. We got a little bit more that we still intend on doing on this farm, but I mean, if you're looking to pick up a last minute farm before hunting season, this one's ready to go, or we're yeah, just gonna probably hang on to it and shoot some, shoot some giants on film, and that's then you're gonna right. wish you bought it. So I mean, that's where pretty much where we're at. <laughs> and they are here. And yeah. again, like I said, super unique. In the 5,000s, surrounded by you know, cattle country, big woods, not a ton of food, which makes your go so much further. Right down the road from Grafton, which, you know, show your wife that place. It's awesome. Yep. People, wineries. Come, people come from all over the place to hang out in Grafton. It's an awesome place. Probably half hour from St. Louis in the airport. I mean, and high, high income. Awesome warm season grasses. This place is very unique. It's one of my favorite farms we've ever owned if not my favorite. Like if I were to start with a piece that I wanted to keep and build into something, this would probably be the, the first choice farm I've, of all the farms that was ever done in Illinois. Yep, really impressive for real.